Welcome to the Cooking Today Show. I'm Alan Gilbreth, and I'm being joined today by my partner in culinary crime, Mr. Brandon Olmstead. How are we doing, Alan? I'm doing good, man. You, you, you waking up on me? I'm trying. Uh, it's 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 been a while. It's been a while. Been it a has. While. You know, you can we can do all the other shows all day long, but when it comes down to this one, you know, you got to be in a specific mindset, and I'm getting there. It's the cooking zen. Yes, yes. The hardest part is is that we're currently in a room that we can't have food in. Well, that's true. But, you know, as soon as we get done, we know we're lots of places where we can get that food. That is true. That is true. That is true. We we are in, you know, we're in the lovely city of Memphis, Tennessee. And let's face it, this is a foodie city. It is. We we love to eat. We love food. And today, folks, we're going to wander off into a favorite topic of ours. Are we going to talk about potatoes now? We're going to talk about potatoes, Brandon. <laughs> let's talk about taters. Oh, man. All right. Well, let's introduce everybody to potatoes. Um, Solanum tuberosum. Sounds like yeah. a spell out of Harry Potter. It really is. You know, it's like, you know, you're you're, you're lost in the uh, in, in the bogs around Hogwarts. You're really hungry. You say that, something comes out of the ground and you eat it, or it eats you. We've seen how those spells go wrong. Yes, yes, you got to be careful with that. Uh, well, let's see here. The potato is a, actually as a technicality, is a member of the nightshade family. Not a family of plants best known for their culinary uses. No, but much like potatoes, when you eat other members of the nightshade family, you also become sluggish. <laughs> All right, I, I think I think carbs versus being um, poisoned is I think carbs are better. I I, I think there are dietitians who'll disagree. Mm, ooh, wow! I Alrighty. didn't say they're right. Mm. I just said they disagree. Mm, 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 mm. Well, let's see. The potato is of one of those unusual plants. Usually, when we talk about cooking and foods and that kind of stuff, it is generally something that came from somewhere else. Right. Of turkeys. Potatoes, tomatoes, pumpkins, these are all uniquely American from the Americas, north or south, of the, these are American foods. Patriot foods, you might say. Yeah, I, absolutely. Of I know we, we mostly identify potatoes with Ireland. Yeah, but we sent them over there. And, and well, that's exactly it. I mean, and there are all kinds you know, of different varieties people, that were found you know, people, all over the Americas. People always think of tomato sauce, and you want to talk about Italy. It's like they didn't have those before us. It's you know an important reason why we had to be discovered. Well, you know, there are some of us that didn't need to be, but you know, we, we, uh, I digress. So let's see, potatoes. So uh, roughly, since we're talking about the family itself, the the tuberosum family. Of, I, I think there's probably close to, if I remember correctly, about 200 different varieties. And of those varieties, you can do about 200 different things with each one of them. Some are better for boiling. Some are better for baking. Some are better for distilling. Ooh, some are better for frying. We'll go back to distilling in a minute. Nah. But yeah, there's, you know, what an amazing plant. And, and I'm going to point out as a gardener. It is actually a very attractive plant. And I'm going to point out as someone who's half asleep, they also make really good clocks. They make clocks? Yeah, the, the potato clock, man. Oh, well, that's yeah. true. That's true. I'm, I'm going to stick with this pretty plant. I, 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 well, you know, I, I'm not a gardener, so it's like yeah, I can't go there. They're, they're fun to grow. They're easy to grow of pretty much, you know, you can grow them in containers. You can mm -hmm. grow them in, you know, grow them in the ground of... But it is a very beautiful plant. But I will say this. It is it is in that not really outstanding department. So if you were just wandering through the field or wandering the woods, I don't think you would really notice this plant. You know, it's one of those, you know, the secrets are all underground. Well, if you don't notice it, you don't deserve the goodness. I mean, I'm just going to say it. So I, I can see where the early uh, explorers and foragers and, you know, you relied a lot on what we call native intelligence. Well, you know, that's, because, yeah. you know, yeah. you had to kind of know what it was and where it was. Yeah. If you're a stranger in a strange land, you don't just go, hey, that might be edible. Mm, yeah. That, you, that 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 usually ends up on the other side of the nightshade family. Yes. Yeah. That's usually not a good place to wind <laughs> up. So so we've got. 
hundreds of varieties of potatoes to talk about. We have got hundreds of uses of, and not every potato is suited to every use. No. I'll throw in there. Of, But, you know, I was sitting here trying to think of what, what, you know, meal set or style these days doesn't involve the potato. It's very rare. Yeah, it's. You know, you can do, you can, you can dress down a potato. You can dress up a potato as much as you want. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like I'm sitting here trying to think through the various things that, you know, all right, what meals do I have that don't have potatoes? But I mean, there's Or even, wouldn't go with potatoes. Right. But I mean, there's, I mean, there's, there's potato side dishes that go with, you know, pretty much anything. And then there's, you know, if, if there's not, there are accents. I mean, you know. True. I, I mean, it's like, you know. Uh, and and uh, I'm trying I'm, to think of a spice category they don't play well with. Uh, and I really can't think of one that I would say, oh, well, you don't want to do that with potatoes. But I would probably say that the only one I won't do with potatoes is a cinnamon sugar. But then and again, I may debate I got, that with then you. again, I got yams. That's going I may debate that with you. Yeah. There's a uh, there's one or two varieties out there that would yeah. sneak up on you and go, you know, we'll see that challenge. Yeah, actually, <laughs> actually thinly sliced uh, Yukon Golds with Ooh. a little bit. on. You know, yeah, I could see that being a really good taste. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, this is the Cooking Today show, and we're going to talk all about more taters when we come back. Welcome back. Brandon and I are discussing the wonderful world of potatoes today. Our starchy little friends. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was, you know, you, you hit me with that whole thing. You know, is there is there a, you know, any meal that you don't use, you know, potatoes on? And I haven't, I was thinking about just through this past week. I haven't made anything that potatoes didn't go along with. You know, I I guess, you know, I mean, there's, I mean, I was thinking about, you know, various pasta dishes and everything, but you know what? Uh, I usually, I mean, I go to Noki, you know, mm -hmm. I throw them in, I throw that in everything and that's all potato based. I just, it, it's hard not to. So, yeah. all right, well, let's pick on a few of our favorites. Let's, okay. let's start with, of, of, you know, just your good old fashioned russet Burbank potato. Old, old Luther Burbank there coming up with the superior, and now this is really your baking potato. Yeah. It's also known for punishment. Really? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to punish somebody who's, you know, being a complete snot at the house, when it's dinner time, you have them peel the potatoes. Mm, that's true. That's true. Because there's a lot of tater there to peel. Yeah. So, all right, so it's big. It's starchy. It's got a pretty thick cover on it. Yeah. You can slice it, you can dice it, you can just, you know, wrap it in aluminum foil with some butter and some holes and bake it. Uh, you, there's there's no wrong, again, there's no wrong way to potato. Yeah, I'm, okay. okay, okay, okay. I'm going to go ahead and step back in case there are, you know, people uh, of your generation who immediately go to their youth and go, well, you've never seen a potato gun. Yes, I have. Yep. <laughs> and I didn't say that was wrong. <laughs> Yeah, that yeah, those were um yeah. <laughs> I, I so it's so as we were saying earlier, it is very versatile. But we're gonna we're gonna stick with the cooking varieties right now. Um when you see a russet, Alan, what is the first thing you imagine making with it? Loaded potato. Loaded potato. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, you know, we're Yeah. And that in and of itself is a loaded description because depending on where you go or who you're with, mm. loaded potato means different things. What is your basic, you know, I mean, like full on, you know, white girl summer loaded potato? Of It is going to be a, a nice, big, healthy size potato. Okay. Of course, baked all the way through. Nice, nice and to the point where if you push in on both ends, it's just going to crush open in the center and yeah. create the potato bowl. Oh. And at that point, depending upon the mood... If we're going to go just all out whole hog, okay, um, it is either going to get beef stew with cheese, all right, or it is going to get gumbo. Okay. See, and, and, and just it's going to be in a big bowl and it's just going to be this big, huge mess. 
Yeah. And if it's gumbo time, it's just – and we all know that gumbo – is just a Creole world word for throw it a, all in a pot. A, a stew we cleaned out the fridge and got rid of all that yeah. seafood. Right. Of which is, and we'll do a whole, you know, we'll do an episode on gumbo coming up soon. But it's just because it's almost crawfish season. Oh, it's you know crawfish season we're, is just a couple of weeks down the road from us. We're in Allen's, you know, you know, this is his happy time. This is his Christmas. Oh, it is. It is. I love spring when it starts rolling in. So. Of yeah, so I, I think you know I, the fully loaded Mac Daddy Tater is the conveyance device for a good soup or stew. Okay, and of course there's the classic, the butter, the chives, the sour cream, all the goodies. Yeah, I f- I feel that chives are a travesty. They don't belong there. Of again, depending upon what else no, is out no. there, some days I'll agree with you. Yeah. There, there's just you know it's it's like the. I mean, but that's that's my thought on chives on anything. You know, chives are a garnish. They're not a flavor. You know. Mm, I got some garlic chives that will argue that point with you. Um, and, and, and I will continue to argue back. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, see, when I think when I think loaded potato, I, I do. I, I, I immediately think the butter, the sour cream, the cheese, the bacon, the, uh, you know, your, your onion substitute, because I, I would rather have, uh, you know, just maybe some slightly caramelized onions thrown mm-hmm. in there instead of okay. chives. I have a, you know, when it comes to, you you know me, I have a texture issue. Yes. And therefore chives usually just. Makes you think of the lawn. It's like, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. It's got a good flavor to it, but it, I might as well be chewing on notebook paper. Right. You know. Okay, so if we change the text, so if we change the texture of the chives. Right, which is why caramelized onions are really good on that. There you go. You know? All right. And, 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 and of course, you may know, maybe a little cooked bell pepper. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I which, love a little roasted bell pepper. Right. So, uh, you know, but I also think along the lines of, you know, like you were saying with the stews or, or the gumbo, and I'm a firm believer in carb stacking. Right. So if you want to throw in a more of a, a, a liquefied pasta dish on top of it, mm-hmm. I'm good there too. People may think I'm crazy, but uh, a load, a, a baked potato is also a really good conveyance for, a queso or a chili. I, I, well, I was sitting here going through my mind and I was going, you know, I'm, if you don't bring it up, I'm going to bring it up because taco taters. Yes. Have, you know, you know, basically it's taco Tuesday and you don't have any shells. Right, right. And you, you split that potato right down the center, kind of like, you know, the leaves of a, you know, taco yeah. shell and pile it in there. Of the taco meats and taco seasonings and everything, just there's just a happy little fiesta with the potato. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and I, you know, there's there's I blame Abuelos for that. Uh, with, you know, a, a <laughs> restaurant here in town uh, because they have the uh, the their their little potato uh, papas. Con- I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not even gonna try because it just mm. it just makes me sound like a hick. <laughs> but <laughs> They make it mixes so well with everything, and mm. it's so good. Yeah, you know, sorry, I, I went to a special place. Thinking it's about it's it. okay, <laughs> it's okay. We're we're talking about a special a special starchy creature yeah. called a potato that we all love. Right. Um, but I've I've also uh you know I I I like the idea of loaded potato skins, which mm, again, okay, the russet is usually a little big for that. Okay, you know. So where are you leaning now? Honestly, when it comes to that, uh, you know, it's like while Yukon Golds are my go-to for smaller things. Right. Uh, a nice medium-sized red here. Okay. And I know the a lot Lara of people, potato yeah, type stuff. Like, okay. And I know a lot of people are, will will look at that and go, "Those those potatoes are better for frying." Yeah, sure. Okay, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> they're they're also really good with as just I mean almost sh- almost chip size. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you just throw a little of whatever you've got on top of it. Yeah, it's a mid-sized yeah. red-skinned potato. Yep. Uh, so it's not as thick and leathery a skin. Right. So that when you do cut them, when you do slice them to make, quote-unquote, tater skins. Right. Of uh, You get a, a thinner skin, but you get all of the flavor yeah. of being yeah. there at the skin. And what's great is that that thinner skin is will, will hold the, together better than a russet skin. Because if you try and pick up a russet, you know... Uh, potato skin and it's loaded half the time they fall apart they break yep 
But the skin on things like the reds or the Yukon golds or stuff like that, it's it's a much thinner skin, but it's a little more stable. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Uh, the structural integrity of yeah. your baked tater. Yeah, because uh, potato skins are, are so much better than just using potato chips. That's very true. Yeah. That's very, very true. Of course, then you also start thinking about using, you know, potatoes to make potato chips for your various, you know, parties, your Super Bowl mm-hmm. party, your your potlucks around the holidays, you know, things like that. There is no wrong way to potato. And I will prove that as much as I possibly can at any gathering you come to of mine. Okay. Yeah. Well, that that is fair. Yeah. Uh, of course, you know, we we're we're dancing around the topic of the marriage of potatoes and cheese. That's because I don't think it's a marriage. I think it's a symbiosis that uh, if if you don't put cheese with your potatoes, then then you're lactose intolerant, or you know you had a bad experience with cheese in your youth. I you know I don't know, but cheese goes. I mean, yeah, it's, it's peanut butter and jelly of of the starch world. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. cheese and potatoes. Well, and, and and it's also the application, the topping, the presentation. There's a certain, as we would call it, a market expectation yeah. when you bring something like that to the table. It's true. You know, if, if if it doesn't look appetizing, like if you've used a cheese that has a oil base that is just sitting on top of your, the potato, nobody's going to choose that when you get mm. to it. But if you've got that nice creamy coating, looks fabulous. Or, or just the crosshatch of a, a good shredded cheddar. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you, all right. Well, yeah. that is the classic cheese. Yeah. You, you a, really has a hard time, you know, failing with that. I'm a, I'm, I mean, this is going to show my bias, and it may be me fishing for a sponsor for mm. the show, but uh, Tillamook. The, mm. they're, the, okay. The way that they shred their cheese, it's a wider spread, and you can take it and just layer it across the potato in a crosshatch. Oh really? And when it when it melts, it looks it looks good. You're like, I don't want to. And then you know, when you're sitting there, I don't want to eat this. Is too pretty. You've already eaten it. Mm. You know, because it, it, it also has a really that good was a delicious work of art yeah. that I just you know took a picture of before I devoured. Right. Right. So <laughs> because that's the only real reason we have cameras on our phone is to show people the things that they can't eat because we already because it's to it. it's gone. Right. Yeah, we beat them to it. So it, it's kind of like a it, it's uh, the hunter's prize. Yeah. Yes, look at the size of that tater. It's the size of my head. It was. It was. I gave it a good home. It's in a better place now. So, of you know, there's so much more to potatoes than just French fries. Yeah. Not that French fries aren't great. Or the various thousands of ways you can do them. Of well, you know, just you know, just crossing my mind. The minute I said French fries, I thought about the. About 50 different spices that I have used on French fries. I have made everything from taco fries to curry fries. I'm a big fan of ranch fries. Yeah, you know, ranch fries? You know, in, instead of you know your, your typical sprinkling of salt, gr- grab that ranch seasoning. You know. there's, there's a lot of variations out there. There's just yeah. tons and tons and tons. And as soon as we yeah. come back, we're going to dive into how many more varieties we can come up with. I get to dive into potatoes? Well, we're going to try. Awesome. <laughs> it won't hurt my feelings any. This is the Cooking Today Show. I'm Alan Gilbert, sitting here with Brandon Olmsted, And we are just having too much fun today discussing the tater. Yeah, well, that's because you can't go, you can't have a bad time with potatoes. There, there's always some fun involved. Um, and but before we get into that, I, I wanna, I wanna talk about the us, okay, the show, okay, else. okay. I know that a lot of people, you know, when when we start talking about food, there are people who in in our varying circles, they kind of look at us as if we're like, you know, oh no, it, they, they sound elitist, but we're not. Yeah, I just I want to get into that because you know this <laughs> this meme this meme came up uh, you know in, in my feed and it's 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 really bad. It, this guy makes a perfectly medium rare steak, right, and, and garlic butter and everything else. Then he cuts it up and puts it in dollar dollar store knockoff uh, macaroni and cheese. Okay, and serves it on a paper plate. Okay, and you know and a lot of people would look at that, look down on that. I, I show this to Alan. Alan immediately goes, "That looks amazing." It does, and I mean that's that's a great thing about. I mean, I'm not going to be a gatekeeper on what a foodie is, 
but in my opinion, a true foodie finds beauty in all food. Oh yeah. And, and you'll learn that if you, you know, you know, if you, if you hit up our, uh, if you hit up our website and check out our past shows, mm-hmm. you'll see we are, we can get very extravagant, but we can do it with the cheapest, most unbelievable ingredients. Well, all right, I have to confess, you know, on the yeah. elitist side of things, since you're mm-hmm. going to use that word, yeah, my absolute positively favorite potato dish in the world right. is, as you well know, Brandon's already, you, you, you guys can't see him through the radio, but he's already smirking because he knows exactly what I'm going to say, is the new red potatoes, mm-hmm. boiled, cooled, cut in half, topped with... Your choice of a cream cheese with a dollop of caviar. I'm sitting here and and I'm just going, oh, I remember during our holiday geek eats when you mm. brought that in. Oh, okay. By the and way, it doesn't even have to be a good cow. Ca- yeah. I mean, we can we can we can serve this yeah. with grocery store ten dollar lump fish in the cute little jar. Yeah. Um, cause you know, basically for those of you who are not caviar aficionados, caviar is just basically fish eggs and salt. Yep. And it's, it's a weird little texture. It's kind of oddly crunchy. It's a little salty yep. and it, you know, crunchy and salt just really go well with potatoes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know any, I mean, you're going to use salt in your potatoes anyway. And I know plenty of people who use, you know, sea salt. Which has a, 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 little a, a little crunch to it, it. You know, bacon bits, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I just, just so from the elitist side of things, and this is also the guy that will make a big batch of chili, some macaroni and cheese, get a big giant potato, mix the chili and the macaroni and cheese together, and then heave it all into the middle of a giant bag, baked potato. Right. And you just have the tater chili mac. Absolutely. And you will eat yourself into a food coma. Yeah. And you will just lay there in pain, still picking at the skin <laughs> you're like, because, you know, it still has that little chili like, flavor to it. You're like, I ate too much as you continue to eat it. Yes. Of, you know, one of the shows we do is it came from the international market. Oh, and one of the comments was, you know, I know what you said about that, but you're still eating it. Right. And and potatoes winds up being one of those things, um, especially if you get into seasoned and I'm going to yeah. pick on another ridiculously simple dish and that is just tater wedges oh yeah and you would be you would be remiss to not mention that as simple a dish as that is how many people get it wrong you know it's 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 a simple dish i mean it is literally as simple as take a small potato cut it into four even pieces just kind of mm-hmm. cut it on the long end, cut it again, and you have four tater wedges. Yep. You put them in nice boiling oil until they crisp up, and you serve them. And you can sprinkle them at this point. Now, see, a lot of people make the mistake of trying to put seasoning too yeah. soon in the process. Yeah, Here, here's the thing. If you are planning to fry these and you decide, I'm going to roll them in the seasoning beforehand, you've just wasted your seasoning. At least half of it. You just seasoned the oil. Which is then going to burn. Yeah. So it's not going to impart the way you think it is. Of I have found that a light sprinkle of seasoning after, and I mean immediately after, it comes out of the oil. Right. Because will do a better job of getting the flavor where you yeah. want it. Because if you let it cool too long, it's not going to hold the seasoning. It's just going to bounce off. Right. It's just going to, yeah. you're just because what pouring a lot of people, dust in the bottom of the peg. What a lot of people seem to forget is that no matter what it is that you're cooking, no matter how you cook it, unless you're putting it into a, a, a an ice bath to flash, you know, freeze it like right then and there. Right. It's going to continue to cook after you've removed it from the oil. And it also does something called recede. AKA pulls back in just a little bit of we always it's kind of a restaurant thing, but you know, there is a magic moment where you let food rest yes. for just a moment before you send it out to the diner. And it's always great to make sure that you've hit it with the seasoning just before you let it rest, because when it can, you know, recedes, when it contracts back into its normal sh- you know, size and right. shape, it will bring that flavor inside. 
as opposed it does. to it just being a crust on the outside. Right. Now, the other thing is dredging and coating. Uh, dredging and coating. It can be so messing. It, it can, but it can be so rewarding. And I'm going to tell people the real big secret here is you got to do it twice, which makes it even bigger and even messier. But it's worth but, it. But uh, an egg wash is nothing more than uh, two thirds egg and one third milk. Yep. Uh, so if you have two eggs, you have about the equal amount of milk to one egg. Right. You beat that up like you're going to make scrambled eggs. You dunk your your tater pieces in that. Then they get rolled in your uh, flour seasoning construct your, 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 over your, to the other your side. Coating. And I'm going to tell everybody, cheat just a little bit and add a little bit of cornstarch to that. Uh, it does stick really well. Now, yeah. if you're really going to go for the coating, once it's been coated once, it goes back into the egg wash, back through the dredge, back through the flour, and yeah. now it goes into the hot oil. Right. Yeah. And it, it's going to make a mess. You're going to make a mess. Yeah. But oh my gosh, the the differences you can make with that. Which you know it that's that that leads me to a recipe that I've always loved, and that is to take potatoes, roll them into balls, and you know it's best to go ahead and you know do the loaded potatoes with you know your your cheese and your bacon, your salt, your pepper. Mm -hmm. Roll it into a ball, and then put them in the freezer for a few minutes. If you've got a like a silicone muffin tray, put them into that silicone muffin tray and slide it into the freezer. Maybe really, maybe ten minutes. Okay, you know, just enough to solidify it. Then you roll it through the egg wash, roll it through basic flour, then roll it through the egg wash again, and then roll it through your fully seasoned coating, and deep fry it. But make sure that you pull it out before it gets too dark brown, because you know, like we said before, it'll continue to cook. Mm -hmm. And the last thing you want is something that you can't bite through because of the, you know, your coating is too, but this will give you a good thick coating. And, you know, because it was frozen beforehand, you're not going to lose the integrity of the loaded potato inside right. until you cut into it. Very cool. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've tried that, you know, had that recently with a gratin potato, which, you know, of course is just mm -hmm. shredded potato, mm -hmm. cheese and everything done that, done that way. And it was it was to die for. It was amazing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, welcome to potatoes. Welcome mm -hmm. to the varieties of what you can do. We haven't talked about scalloped or casseroled or yeah. we haven't gotten into your, your precious Yukon golds or oh. all of the other types out there. Yeah. And, you know, there's even colored oh, potatoes. Oh, oh, yeah. When people see purple potatoes for the first time, they look at you like, what happened? It's like, And they make a great mashed potato. Yeah, it's like. Just try it. They're looking at you like it's it's weird. It's purple. What did you add to it? You're like, no, it's just tater. Yeah. yeah. Some of the some of the best foods you'll have will look weird. Oh, they should look weird. If they're if they don't look weird, you're not trying. So let's let's pick on let's pick on your Yukon Gold. What is your favorite Yukon Gold recipe? Oh, oh, with me with Yukon Gold, it is honestly just tried and true down home style mashed potatoes Skin okay and on mashed potatoes oh dirty dirty taters dirty taters yeah I, i'm a good southern boy you know I, I i was told that you know i had to have my vegetables and my vitamins and all that jazz and the best way to do that is to leave that skin on the potato but if you're using things like russets the last thing you want to do is bite into some leathery you know russet skin when right. you're eating mashed potatoes but your yukon golds you you don't even realize it, but all all that flavor hits you when you bite into it, and yeah, and my basic potato recipe is, you know, I take about six Yukon Golds, you know, chop them, boil them, uh, and you know, put them into a pan a pot to just sit for a minute, then throw in butter, sour cream, and maybe just the slightest pinch of salt, and then black pepper. Mm. I'm, I'm I'm very I'm very generous i'm very liberal when it comes to my black pepper i will spread it around that sounds awesome all right this is the cooking today show uh we are talking about taters and you know what we'll be right back this is the cooking today show i'm alan gilbert i'm here with my partner in culinary crime brandon and brandon we are just it's tater day yeah we're it's positively all about potatoes it is just 
Wow. <laughs> I think it's hilarious to talk about potatoes on a radio show. Because, you know, they always tell you, avoid peas in, unless you've got a really good pop filter. And it's like, we're going to talk about potatoes. Yep. Well, <laughs> you know what? Starchy, waxy, those in yep. between, we don't yep. care. They're potatoes. All right. So let's 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 take a step back. Let's go into the Wayback Machine. Okay. Uh, I like we're, the Wayback we're, Machine. We're going we're to talk about, you know, the your misspent youth. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> Right. Mine or yours? Cause yours, yours. Mine involves yours. cavemen. Mine's so. not that. Mine's not that far away. You know, it's like you know, <laughs> it, it's it's only a few decades. Mm. But what I want to ask you is that you know, it's like, of course, you were born. Were you born, or did you just grow up in Texas? Oh, I was actually born there. Okay, so you know, you grew, but you grew up in Texas. I did. I spent my formative years in Texas, you mm-hmm. know, just just outside of Houston. Uh, actually, closer to Galveston than Houston really, but you know, Hey, it it's Texas. It is. We are known for our meats. We do. Yeah. But there's always, you know, it's like, you know, you know, we're also, we're Southern by nature. So let's talk about potato salad for a minute. Oh, wow. okay. That is probably the best lead into that ever of yeah. you cannot have a good old fashioned pit barbecue without quote unquote, Tater salad. Tater salad. And of, there's so many varieties of that in and of itself, too. We could start an right. armed fight yeah. over the types of potato salad. But I'm going to ask you, we're, we're having ribs. What is your go-to potato salad? <sighs> Yellow mustard. Yellow mustard? Yep. It, and, it uh, is. It's just, if you're going to go back to the childhood yep, and you're going to go, what got put on the paper plate Walking around waiting on the cow to get done, what you know? What did you get hit with? Right, and, 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 and just Miney the, also had. I, I, I want to go ahead, a little bit of sweet relish. I want to go ahead and uh, you know <laughs> throw it out there too, because we're here in Memphis, Tennessee, you know, and we're talking about it, and you know, of course, we're talking about ribs, and you brought up cow. Yes, guys, there's beef ribs are a thing, and they're amazing. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I, I know, I know, we're 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 home of the pig here in Memphis, so you know, it's like, you know, that's mm. what we think, but man. Beef ribs are just yeah, they're to die for, and but no, no, there's something about the flavor, almost flavor clash of mustard potato salad against a brown sugar vinegar based barbecue sauce. They they just complement themselves so much. Well, there is as you as we love to say, it is all about the contrast, right? Because. You, you of course have we're we're gonna say all the deep brown flavors. Yes, <laughs> coming from the meats, yeah. the char, the smoke, the sugar. We can't get into it too yeah. much, or else you know I'm yeah. gonna you're just on the you're mic. gonna your eyes are already starting to roll <laughs> back. And there is something very pleasing about a well made yellow mustard potato, potato salad. salad. Not too much, really. You don't. Nobody just wants to eat out of the. F- the the yellow mustard can. Oh, I but, don't know. I've I've known people who have, and they usually use corn dogs to scoop it out. Uh, well, that's a corn dog because really, yeah. that's that's all a corn dog is. It's the mustard conveyance device. True, uh, but potato salad is is much more of a marriage between texture and flavors and yeah. filler. Yes. Uh, because, you know, the potato is you know in the filler food category. Yeah. You know, every civilization has had. Great starches, you know, whether it's rice, whether it's potato, whether it's corn, but you know, everybody had to have something that was that centerpiece mainstay of the diet. Okay. And, you know, so when we get to the potato salad, that is kind of the centerpiece mainstay of every group having an outing in the summer. Right. It is pretty much a food group all to itself because I have had some amazing potato salads that had nothing to do with mustard. No. Um, I have had an herbed potato salad that featured uh, lemon, pepper, and tarragon rather heavily. That sounds really good. And was but shockingly I, tasty. But I feel that I would probably pair that with a white meat, like a chicken or a fish. Of not going to deny it was with chicken. Okay. It was, it was with bird. There yeah. was a lot of bird that day. 
of, I have had a variety of, I've had a buttermilk based of, huh. uh, it, kind of almost a ranch dressing. Okay. Okay. Sweet uh, potato salad. Right. Uh, you know, kind of edged up to it. I've had a Fiesta Ranch potato salad. Chipotle, uh, you know, potato salad is actually a... And, and you know, I, so we start I, kind of edging yeah. into... I tried that for the first time this past year. And yeah, they're yeah. they're amazing. So, of you know, of course, there's two or three different kinds of good German potato salad. Right. And, you know, you start naming a country in Europe and there's a potato salad to go with it. Right. Of trying to really think if there was anything that was just bizarrely shocking and there really isn't uh potato salad is kind of a time honored tradition now now this is just popping into my head to see if i can just challenge the you know the chef over there Mm. have you ever had a sweet potato salad yes tell me about that because that sounds you know like it'd be amazing of okay the one i had was all right, it was very interesting. It was kind of one of those challenges. Right. So about a third of the about a third of the sweet potato got kind of mashed up like mashed potatoes. Right. And that became kind of the coating to go all over the diced sweet potato. Okay. And then we just basically cheated and went straight for pumpkin pie spices. Makes sense though. And it was just basically like eating a really big sweet potato pie. And they even added little baby marshmallows to the mix. <laughs> and it was just this this big yeah. kind of big kind of dark orange chiffon looking. And it smelled good. It tasted exactly like you expected it to taste. You could hit the cloves, you could hit the allspice, there's, you could hit the cinnamon. There's got to be pecans in that thing. And and well, oh, we, we made them. We pralines. made that. We made that optional. We had crushed pralines to the yeah. side because not everybody likes nuts with that. Uh, but you could you could add crushed pralines to it. Right. And you know, basically, it was just. It was basically sweet potato pie yeah. with with no crust. I think I know what you need to bring to the uh, you know to the morning show for the food dude segment. Next okay. week. <laughs> well, this morning they got hit with of twice baked potatoes converted to mashed potatoes, garlic and herb. Ooh. So yeah, yesterday I should have woke up earlier. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, I could have brought you a big bowl of. We had a lot of baked potatoes right. yesterday, and everybody kind of got full. So there's two or three baked potatoes left over. And, you know, that is the perfect place to start because I love the whole. And again, we every time we talk about a recipe, there's 50 variations. Right. Of you take one of the baked potatoes and it becomes mashed potatoes, no skin. Right. Then you, you herb and flavor that. You whip that up. Then you go back to your baked potatoes. You bake them again to get them good and hot. You spoon a trench down the center and you fill it with the converted ba- uh, mashed potatoes. Sprinkle with cheese, your choice. Right. Serve. And so now you get the baked potato impact. You get the mashed potato impact. Plus, you get the impact of whatever kind of cheese or sausage you're serving it with. Okay. And to a little bit of a degree, because it is a twice baked potato, you do get that tater skin type effect if you were using any of the red type potatoes. Okay, I'm down. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So we we had a good time with that. And, you know, as I explained it to him this morning, I was kind of like, you know, and the secret ingredient here was just that little hint of Italian seasoning. Okay. Just your your standard. I went to the grocery store and bought a a jar of Italian seasoning. Right. Which is it's just your your standard mix. There there's nothing special about this. Mm-hmm. But people don't normally think about that in like a mashed potato recipe. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to realize that uh, my secret ingredient when it comes to a, you know, any of our gatherings, if I'm doing potatoes, one of my secret ingredients is Montreal steak seasoning. There you go. You know, it, it just, it, it hits. I mean, that's, that's the only way to say it is it, it hits. 
It, well, you know, we, we like to pick on some of the pre-made seasoning packets yeah. and kind of go, all right, look, people, that's enough salt and paprika. Stop. Right. Um, however, there are a number of brands. And, you know, I find it odd that sometimes it's the local store brand. Right. That is actually a good mix. It's a great place to start. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, just, you know, look look through the generic spice rack at a, a local, you know, Big box or mom and pop store. Right. Yeah. You know, honestly, if you go to a butcher shop though and you find something that has Ooh. obviously been canned locally mm. or jarred locally, you won't find a better mix. Yeah. Because that is a fan that usually comes from a family recipe that they've been using for a millennia. Well, you know, of uh, that's where your local delis kick in. And they've already got pre blended olive oil based spice mixes yeah. for their sandwiches and that kind of stuff. Mm. Guys, these things work great. Yeah. And and no one says you have to use ketchup on fried toma- on fried potatoes. No. We're not, say- we're not some of these really yeah. good spice mixes, especially yeah. in the olive oil, make great dipping sauces for fries. Oh, I mean, forget the forget that, you know, if you thinly slice those potatoes, fry those, well, thinly slice those potatoes, soak them in sugar water. And then deep fry them, and then just hit them with you know with olive oil. You can't go wrong. The you know welcome you know we've been talking about the potato for an hour, Brandon, and and we're barely scratching. We the haven't even gotten off of maybe three varieties. I barely got past the skin. We. Got, <laughs> but what can we say? The potato is so versatile; it is yeah. so usable. And I'll be honest, all right, gardeners, if you've never grown one, give it a shot. Put one in a pot somewhere, and and again, this is one of those, get the kids involved. Right. You want to see the kids crack up laughing? Let them unpot one of these things in two or three months and find actual potatoes (laughs) in the pot. Right. And you can do this with any of your smaller potato varieties. Yeah, Mm -hmm. if they start getting the eyes on them, don't, don't get in a rush. Let them get some eyes on them. Put one in a nice big pot, some nice loose dirt. And turn them loose and amaze the kids. <laughs> yeah, because any anytime you get the kids involved in something like this, that is the way you get over having picky eaters. Yeah, they grew it. They got to eat it. They grew it. They got to eat it. There you go. Well, folks, this is the Cooking Today show. It's Alan and Brandon, and we've been talking about taters, and we're probably going to have to do about six more shows about potatoes. Probably. Mm-hmm.